take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Amen. Now, um, I count it necessary to come here and exhort you because that's what I've been doing. Uh, I want to know the way you are feeling. I want to know the way you understand the scriptures. I want to know the way you have been, you are provoked. I want to know, are you confused? Are you ashamed? Are you embarrassed? I want to know how you are feeling or what people are saying to your ears concerning that which we did as a project divinely communicated to us. Uh, we came to induce you to steer you up to a direction in the politics are just finished now. Has it finished actually? Uh, we, we gave you a message from the Lord. You had a prophecy. But then you are seeing it in another way. Uh, we have listened to the minds of people. And what you have in your mind, I trust your brother has spoken it. And I trust your sister has spoken it. The feelings you are expressing here, of course, are the same feelings our brethren in various places are expressing. And uh, there are those who are ashamed, maybe ashamed of holiness revival movement now. There are those who are discouraged. There are those who are in various conditions. I want us to know what the Lord is saying in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 61 verse 7. I read from verse 7. For your shame ye shall have double. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their walk in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord had blessed. Amen. That is a prophecy to holiness revival movement. That which has touched you that is giving you shame, the Lord says a double reward is coming upon you. Yes, that's what the Lord is saying. 
everlasting joy shall be unto your lives. It has, you are now in sorrow, like the disciples of Christ that found themselves in sorrow when it appeared apparently that Jesus Christ had been affected. The gospel had been destroyed. There was no more hope. For their Messiah had died. So it means all they were doing for three and a half years were, were, was altogether vanity. It was shame now that would come upon them. When Jesus resurrected from dead, he told them, you now have sorrow, but you ha your heart shall rejoice. The honor and the promotion that, is, that God is bringing upon holiness revival movement is great. You who have suffered the shame, you shall enjoy the joy. He said in verse, in verse 8, For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. God will direct our work in truth. Actually, he has been directing our walk in truth. I'm going to explain things to you. You will see that we did not commit sin. We did not tell lie. We did not say a thing that God did not give us. It's only God is lifting up members of holiness movement to understand him in a higher way. Amen? You have the privilege to understand God in a higher way. And that will make you walk with him in a higher realm. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. The people who are despising members of holiness movement, they shall respect us. I say they shall respect us. That is what the Lord is promising. Yes. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people, all that see them shall acknowledge them, and they shall uh, uh, and they are, um, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. All those people in the nation and outside the nation that come across us, they shall acknowledge us. They shall respect us. That these people, God is with them. God has chosen them. I'm telling you what is going to happen. Is that okay? It's because you see it wrongly. That is why you're sorrowful. As the disciples of Jesus, they did not understand the resurrection. That's why they were sorrowful. They did not know all the preachings they were hearing. It is time now to understand what Jesus had been telling them. Slow, slow, far to understand what the scriptures are saying. What the scripture has said. That's why he reproved them. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to be killed, to be buried, and on the third day to rise? Is then their heart was opened to understand the scriptures. When you understand the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 2 the effect of understanding in our lives. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. What understanding will do if you have it. It says, let's read verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh what? Knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his sins. For we are his sins. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, Every good part. Now, let's read verse 10, I mean verse uh, 10 and 11. One, two, go. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, 
and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Hallelujah. Are there people who now say holiness revival movement is a disappointment? It has led us to a disappointment. It has embarrassed our life. It has covered us with shame. Those who say so have not gotten understanding. Because discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Are there people who are saying, no, I will withdraw. I want to withdraw from holiness revival movement now. Because I can't understand what is going on. Yes, actually you don't understand. If you understand, understanding shall keep thee. Amen? And if you don't understand, go to the Lord in the school of prayer. He that lacketh wisdom, understanding. Let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not. And it shall be given him. On my own part, yes, when such result, uh, results were announced, I felt the pain, but my heart was peaceful. Because I know that we will understand God in a higher way. We will understand God in a better way. God is doing something. We shall come to know it. The matter has not finished. When it finishes, we shall know. Amen? Amen. And I know that I did not commit sin. Holiness movement did not commit sin. We didn't take a contract from politicians and say we were going to support the politicians. No. We, are act, we acted according to the dictate, the direction, the, the instruction of God whom we serve. And we did it from the beginning to the end. No politician got involved. No politician. From all the money we spent in producing all these materials to encourage Christians in Nigeria to know the mind of God, no politician got involved. That, that's no person outside holiness movement. God involved. The government of the party were even promoting their president. They, be, they, were, uh, they appeared to be unaware of what we were doing. Nobody met with us. The effort to see the presidency failed up to today. So, all we did was not a party work we were doing. We were doing a Christian work. It's part of our evangelism. Is that okay? Now, I said to someone, if Jealous Vega wants to go to pack sand or carry gravel somewhere, they need to pass through a village to go to that place. What will they do? They will construct road to that village. Is that so? And to that place where they are packing their thing. Are they constructing the road for the village? What are they constructing the road for? For the business they have. Is for the business they have. In, but that business will have to pass through that, that, that village. That is why they are busy constructing the, the business across that village. I mean the road, across the village. Another neighboring village will say, eh, you want to promote this village above us? Jealous beggar will say, we are not involved in your strife. Whatever strife is going on between the two villages, that whichever, whatever competition, is going on. This one wants to be, uh, to, to be more pronounced than the other. That's not our business. Ours is that gravel is over there. That is where we want to go and park. And for our vehicles to go there well, we have to construct the road. Is that okay? We have a gospel commission to us. God has given us an open door. And he has told us, see what is happening. Do this, my children, because of the work I have given to you. We say, ah, this thing is true. We stood up to construct the road, to pass through that party, to where we want to go and do evangelism. Because if we don't have a peaceful nation, we can't preach. 
How could I have come here now? If there was running up and down, could I have come here? It's not possible. And that's why we got the people straight up. Please, this is the mind of God. Let's go this direction so that we will be able to have a peaceful nation that can, we can use to preach this gospel. Because the Lord has given to us an open door. The Lord has given to us gospel opportunity. Let's do this. Rise up and do this. So that the door should not be closed against us. That is why that was done. Is that okay? David said in the book of Psalm 18. Psalm 18. He said. In verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. And I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his, in his eyesight, with the merciful. Thou would show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou would show thyself upright. And with the pure, with the pure, thou would show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou would show thyself forward. Now, I now checked myself. Did we purposely tell a lie? No. Did we receive bribe to corrupt ourselves? No. Are we making a show of ourselves to tell the world or tell the nation, holiness movement is here. Is that what we were doing? No. Then, where should we be a reproach to any people? Can righteousness be a reproach? Can the righteous man be a reproach? What, is, what actually brings reproach to a man? What actually brings reproach to a nation? Sin. Righteousness exalts a nation, a person, a group, a movement. A church, but sin is a reproach to any man. Did we make you to commit sin? Were we abusing the other party? Did we crucify and curse the other party? No. So if we if our hands are clean, our hearts are clean, our mouth clean, all our activities clean, which way do we get ashamed? Which way are we a reproach? That you say, I can't raise up my, my hate again in the society. Is it because you sin? Okay. Let us now say maybe they are saying wrong prophecy, false prophecy came out from holiness movement. And it has been proved to be false. Even that we who know scriptures laugh at those people. Are you hearing me? Because the word of God is too complex for you to conclude so short. It's too complex for you to conclude so short. The time is too short to make the declarations you are making. He that, loves, he that is first shall become the last. You are first, you may become the last. So, that's our understanding. Then I now have a feeling. It will be good to explain to our people. So that, because this matter shall soon pass away, it shall soon become a history. So you can have the understanding of the matter right. Now, take it this way. How many of you listened to the prof testimony of uh, John Noah when it happened last year? You have listened to it. The testimony of John Noah from last year. Okay. In the testimony, did you hear him mention Pastor Porica there? 
that the, did you hear him mentioning the president of the nation? That what the Lord said what? That what? That I, the president should call on me to pray for him. Do we believe that that is from Jesus? We believe? Exactly. It started last year. When it was hot. When that man was under the agony of hell going and coming and with interaction with Jesus known to everybody in that quarter. For the Lord will say I'm coming at five to take him. At five everybody will gather as we gather now and the Lord will start with him. And he will be in hell and be muttering what he saw in hell. It was so clear. And the testimony of John Noah and the life he presents have been in righteousness. Is that so? Nothing to doubt it. Now, it came this year that John Noah, the Lord, came to him again. In another practical experience. Okay? And was saying, because South South at that time were turning away from the president. They wanted to vote the other man. Did you understand it so? You saw the struggle in, in Port Harcourt, in, in uh, River State. They may even write to buy Elsa State. So the Lord said, what are these people doing? You are turning away from my, my will and you want to put your cart in the other side? For what reason? Tell these people that they should repent and turn back. Otherwise, judgment shall befall them. I did not sympathize with the northern brethren that are being killed. That they still want to promote that type of government. So, now, with that, he now said, call Pastor Paul Rican. I am already used to messages from the Lord. And you know about it too. Are you aware of it? From Ghana, get a Pastor Paul Rica. From Togo, get a Pastor Paul Rica. From Germany, the Lord came to somebody there, call my son Pastor Paul Rica. It is like that. So I've become used to the message from the Lord. So, call Pastor Paul Rica and tell him that I said he should raise up holy preachers, I mean, holy prayer warriors for me in the country to sit this man back on his throne. And also, to turn away the wrath of my father from the south-south. Of course, to establish his will in Nigeria. The enemy will not have the upper hand to do what he wants to do, to perform his enterprise. Amen? Now, when this came to me, if you see in the, ma in the magazine, I said, when I received this message from the Lord, and became sure that it was from the Lord, I decided not only to raise prayer warriors from holy men and women, but to educate the Christians, the believers, on the mind of God. Because the Lord now has re revealed his mind. This is the direction I want to go. Are you getting it? The Lord had, was going to Jerusalem. He had shown his disciples this is the direction. Where was he going to? But he must pass through Samaria. Did the Samarians, uh, Samaritans ag agree? Did they allow him to pass? They didn't allow him. So when they didn't allow him, the John, John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, sons of Thunder, say, eh? This is what you want to do, and the Samaritans are, not, are saying, No, God, these people don't understand. Give us chance. We will call down fire from heaven and do what? Consume them. But, so when we have consumed them, then you will pass. Who are they? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Lord reproved them. I don't do so. The time of judgment has now come. I'm looking for the will of people. I want people to do it willingly. 
They refuse. Is that the only way? I have other ways to go to Jerusalem. And the Lord abandoned that way. Is that okay? But did Samaria become of Christ later? Yes. He said, beginning from Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria. Don't force it. A time will come, they will willingly open up. Amen. That's God's way. Then, when I wrote the, the magazine, the, the message of the magazine, uh, our brother with us, Senator Emmanuel Bocha, is a member of the Holiness Revival Movement. How many of you know him? Oh, please wave that hand very well. Ah, okay, okay. I know when you come to conference, you will easily know him because he's a, a prominent brother. So, he, he visited us because he's always with us he, because he's fully for Christ, 100% for Jesus. He goes with us also for missionary work outside the country. Is that okay? He, he has come with us even within the country, he has come with us. Maybe, so let, let's go forward. So, when we, I showed him the writing of the magazine. Thank God, he also himself has won the Senate. He's coming back now to the government. He read through the writing and said, this is exactly so. Yeah, President Jonathan is discouraged and is prepared for the worst. So, when he said so, uh, our mommy Linda was sitting there with us in, in, the, in the room while the discussion was going on. And I know the way the Lord speaks to her. I have proved it. I have understood it. I know my reputation is in this matter. But the just shall live by faith. If we are always fearful, we can never conquer. We cannot reach our desired destination. If you are full of fear. Are we getting it? We have seen how many people challenge the revelations challenge it all over the country to, to hire preachers. But that, I didn't bother about that. Because I was sure the Lord was speaking. And man, let, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silenced before him. And let, let the Lord be true and let every man be a liar. So if God is in a matter, forget about the voice of man. So don't mind what man will say. Don't mind your shame. Don't even mind your death. Is it not God? Come, do you have another reason why you were created? Do you have another reason why you were saved? So, as a result, I have proved her, known that this is God. This is how it happened. I now, the Lord gave her the following message. Tell President Jonathan that I, the Lord, Jesus, allow the presidential seat to be hot to him, to let him know that only I, the Lord, have the final say. He has been trusting in the power of evil forces and the weights and prayers of evil pastors. Have they helped him now? I wanted him to know that those pastors are not my ministers. He does not have time for me, his creator. He has no time for my world. But now, it's only me that can save him in his political situation. It's only who? It's only who? He said, it's only me, God, has the power to save him now in his political situation. Now, having presented himself as the savior, political savior to Jonathan, see what he now said. 
Jonathan, I am still your creator and heavenly father. Come to me and I will show you pity, love, and kindness. Be peaceful, prayerful, and put your trust on me. Repent of your evil lie. Turn to me. The satanic powers and help you have been seeking have not helped you. Many pastors have laid hands on you and prayed for you. But because they are evil in their way, their prayers are not effective. I do not hear their prayers. What? Is this the voice of God? How do you know the purity of the voice? The, the conditions required for salvation. God is not a prosperity preacher. That feels whether in your, you repent or not, in your sin, good is coming. Good is coming. If you hear a prophet like that, that's not from God. Because there's something God wants to achieve. God's own kingdom is the kingdom of righteousness. If the Lord wants to do a thing, the ultimate aim is righteousness. Is that okay? And that is why he is pointing out this man's sins and saying, turn to me. I am your savior. That makes it a gospel message. He continues. I am the one resting at Buhari who is now exerting my political force to the point you are threatened in your throne. I have done this so that you can run to me for help and salvation. Why have I raised Buhari to be shaking the nation? What's the, what's the reason? So that you can run to me. Did Jonathan run to Jesus? So let's have a balanced understanding. It's a privilege you have to, to understand your God. To understand that at every level, the gospel must be balanced. In understanding, we must have balanced understanding. So that you should run to me for help and salvation. As I met Pharaoh's heart, hardened. And he pursued the children of Israel confidently, thinking he would overtake them and conquer them to the point that the children of Israel became afraid of their life. Even so have I at this time hardened Buhari's heart so that he is full of self-confidence that he will win this election by his power. Many are today threatened by him, but Nigeria belongs to me. The, the almighty God. The question is, does Nigeria belong to God? Yeah. Is it the person, is the race for the swift? Is the battle for the strong? No. All lies in the hand of God. The other months of many years ago, one election apparently, the Lord did not give him the throne. Because the throne is mine. Are you hearing what we're saying? So he's telling this man, the throne is mine. Follow this course, I will give it unto you. The devil also claimed over there, the throne is mine. I give it to whomsoever I will. Who is true? Is it Satan or God? If Satan can boast that he will give the throne, can God also give the throne? What was Satan's condition to give the throne? It was turn your heart, your back at God. Bow down. Stop the worship of God. Worship me. I will give you the throne. Does God not have a condition to give the throne? Doesn't he have? He presents it here. The condition. That I will give you the throne. Now, he goes on to say, the self-confidence, power, and vehemence of Pharaoh caused many among Israelites to doubt the possibility of their deliverance through me. Even Moses doubt, doubted too. So also you and many others in the country today are doubting the possibility of my giving you the throne in this coming election. Now, 
I want you to know that Nigeria belongs to me. For my children's sake and for the sake of my righteous and holy ones, I, the Lord, will bring you back to the throne. Amen. I want us to remember that we are dealing with history. Is that okay? We are studying something in a higher way. Because it's giving us a better knowledge of our God. Alright? So, I the Lord will give you the throne. Not only you, I will also bring back others who walked in my ways. You wasted your strength and resources on evil and in ways contrary to me. Jonathan, come to me, Jehovah. Seek me with your whole heart. Learn my righteous and holy way. Seek my true ministers who will lead you to me, Jehovah. Tell you the truth. Teach you my ways and give you good counsel. Is this the voice of God? Is there truth in this voice? The Lord had told Cyrus, King Cyrus, that you don't know me, but I have chosen you for the sake of my children. When this prophecy was given, 150 years, before Cyrus was born. That's why he said, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. He was never born then. 150 years. The Lord was speaking of Cyrus. The work Cyrus would be done. That he would bring Cyrus to kingship. And that this is what King, King Cyrus would do. But do you know, when Cyrus was born, this message reached Cyrus. And Cyrus knew and acknowledged the God of heaven. And believed what the Lord told him. That's why he said in the book of Ezra. The book of Ezra. Chapter 1. Ezra. Chapter 1. The Bible tells us in verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying. Everybody, verse 2. One, two, go. Thus seeth Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is Judah. Verse 3, let us go. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the, Lord, is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 4, let's go. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the mean of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts. Beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Can you see what Cyrus said? Did Cyrus come to acknowledge God? That is what God wanted to cause that man to come to do. So that when I do this thing, it's for my glory, not for your name. It's not for your party. As for your party, they wouldn't have been able to bring you there. I want you to follow this course. So that I will give you this. You will pronounce in all the world. The God of heaven has given me this kingdom. But you gather other people. 
gather some negative forces. If you got this thing, since you refused God, if you got this thing, what will you say? My strength give me the, the throne. These other people, oh, what the elders have done, what this gave me the throne, or oh, what this? I want you to understand that the God of heaven is the God of conditions. There is no prophecy that is without condition. Except man is not involved in that prophecy. If it is if that prophecy has nothing to do with man, then there is no condition. But if it has to do with man, there is condition. And that condition has to be fulfilled. Now, what I did is, I stopped thus far. The one I gave to people stopped here. It is not the full prophecy. The one put in the internet stopped just where I have stopped now. I, I just took the last sentence, which is, Be peaceful. The presidential seat is yours again the second time. Don't fear. Don't doubt. I, it was, it is the last statement. I, the Lord Jehovah, have spoken it. I took it and joined where I stopped now. But the full prophecy is the one I sent to him, the president. Not the one I gave to everybody. Because the message belongs to him. Is that clear? As for the people that I gave this to, is to make them know the mind of God. The direction they should follow as the Lord has revealed it. Here is the direction that you should follow because God has revealed it. But for the full message, I gave it unto him. I sent in various ways to reach the president. And somebody confidently told me the prophecy reached the president. The magazine reached the president. Now, what is the additional thing that was not added here, that was not here, that was in the president's uh, message? It goes, Seek to meet with my son, Pastor Paul Ricker, who sweetens my heart by his righteous and holy life. And by his commitment to me and my true word, I answer his prayer speedily. You may doubt this, thinking he is just as the other pastors you have met. But there is a great difference. When you meet with him, you will know this. Senator Emmanuel Butcher will testify of him. He has been blessed tremendously in life and enjoys a peaceful and joyful living through the ministry of my son, Pastor Paul Ricker. Call him to speak with you and pray for you so that you may be cleansed and be made acceptable unto me. This is the additional thing that is part of, that is given to the president that was not given to everybody. Why would we not put this, give to everybody? They will say, ah, these people want to promote themselves. Are you getting it now? Ah, uh, uh, they want look at look at this. Look, at, just come and look at this. It's just self promotion they're looking for. So we cut off that uh, that other aspect that should be only for him. We cut it off. So that is maybe explaining why some of people say, "Hey, you give prophecy, it fell. You give prophecy, there's condition. There's condition. Look at it in the book of First Samuel." First Samuel, we read chapter 2. First Samuel, chapter 2. I read verse 27 to verse 30. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Did I plainly appear unto the, unto, the fa, uh, unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear effort, to wear an effort before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, 
keep ye at my sacrifice and at, and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Let's read verse 30 together. One, two, go. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Can the Lord give this message to the, to the president? I made a promise to you. And I told you, do this. I'm going to take care of your case. But since you despised me and felt that and relied more on this other power, far be it from me. I said so before, but now I withdraw. Is that scripture? I say, is that scripture? Now, the man the Lord sent to come and tell him, your house will be established forever. Your priesthood will be established forever. For I have chosen your house to establish the priesthood forever. A man was sent there before to tell him this. Was that a false prophet? But it didn't come to pass because it was broken on the way. Was that a false prophet? No, understand scripture. I say you have the privilege to understand scripture in a higher way. He was not a false prophet. But now another man has come to say, maybe he's still the same man before, or another man now to say, why did you go this way? Why did you go, began, begin to do these evil things? Why are you permitting these evil things? Ah, you are honoring me above me. You are honoring your sons above me and you are allowing your sons to pollute my altar. Okay. Oh, did I promise you before that I was going to establish your priesthood forever? But now far be it. Far be it. He that honors me, I will honor. I brought my work to you too. Why? I told you my aim was to bring you to myself. My aim was to bring you to my righteousness. But you, you despised it. He that despises me shall be disdained. Shall be disdained. How do I esteem him that despises me? I say no. I can't do it anymore. So, that is God's way. The same thing happens to you. Don't think the dreams... You have dreams about all these things will come to pass automatically. No. There are conditions to those dreams. Don't think the prophecy that comes to your, that you have heard will work automatically in your life. No. Don't think so. Don't. It has conditions. Look at it in the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 9 verse 9 let's read one to go at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Is that scripture? Is that scripture? Are you ashamed for being a scriptural people? That shame is not from the Lord. But for those who are mocking at you, the Lord will show them later that you are the right people. 
Now read verse 10 again. Verse 10 now. One, two, go. If simple, does it go follow this this prophecy directly? Now read verse seven and verse eight. One, two, go. At what instant? I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. That's scripture. So it means all of you, some of you that dreamed that, oh, I died. You dreamed that this thing happened. A bad thing happened. Check it up in your life. If there is sin, repent of that sin. All those evil will not come again. That's scripture. Don't think I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Hey, my dream must come to pass. No. It's a conditional dream. There are conditions. There are reasons why you dream. The curse, costless does not come. Handle the curse. You won't see the curse anymore. That's how the word of God say, means it. Then, but then we are hopeful as we have faith some miracle will happen. Could that be the communication of the Holy Spirit? Then if it is the communication of the Holy Spirit that is witnessing to hearts some overturn. The Lord may overturn some things. The Spirit should also be witnessing that. Pray that this man shall humble. Because the Lord will not do it if he does not humble and recognizes the Lord. Is that okay? Oh, we have more time to consider miracle. Pray God cause this man to fulfill this. Actually, what we were doing when we were working hard, we did all to approach this man. We did everything. We passed through three places, three ways to ensure we get. And all of them gave us something near, something near. We have seen him. We have spoken with him. The last message uh, I received was that he said until he will, after election, because he's too busy, he will see his own till after election. If that is so, let us see whether it will be like that then the word of God will be fulfilled. What we were doing, we were really wishing God, even if the man does not repent, just do it for our sake. But, did we, do we have scripture for it? That's our mind. And that is, uh, is by the way, we cannot hold to scripture praying that type of prayer. But we are expressing our wish. This man is slow to, be, to believe. This man is even disbelieving the thing. God just put him aside. Do it for us. He didn't put him aside. <laughs> Amen. He didn't put him aside. He did what he wanted. But then, let's consider what God did. What is the principal thing? What was our principal cry or prayer? Well, now, yeah, as it is in my magazine, oh Lord, one, two, go. Oh Lord, spare Nigeria for the sake of your righteous children. Again, oh Lord, spare Nigeria for the sake of your righteous children. The third one, oh Lord, spare Nigeria for the sake of your righteous children. Is that prayer answered? Why do we say he has not answered? You wouldn't have been here. Some of you would have run to your interior villages. Many would have left this country already. Many, and many would have died. The destruction in this country would have been so heavy. Considering what is understood and practically seen 
to be the plan of that day. But God, because we prayed, he put things in a way that our prayer should be answered. You hear me? He spared Nigeria. And now we are still peaceful. The gospel is going on. Has he answered our prayers? Again he said, the South South people were in disagreement. They were going to the other side. But through that prayer, have they come together? Yes. Have they come together? Yes. Have they done what the Lord says? Yes. South East, did you come together? Yes. Did you do what the Lord says? Yes. Then which way was not that prayer answered? The prayer has been answered. Unity has been, in, has been achieved. And they showed clearly to the world that they are united. And that's the Christian zone. Showed clearly to the world that we have come together. And the man too got encouraged. My people are with me. Amen. Amen. And many other such things he did around the nation. In truth. Now, not to talk about many things that have happened. Now, there is a political consciousness that has entered Christians in this nation. Let them say, please, you who have not registered, go and register. The Igbo man will now close his shop. Are you hearing me? And will go and stand on the line, even if it will be for three days. Because he knows the welfare of his country and of himself is in this matter. But before they didn't bother. Before nobody bothered. Now, the eyes of the people are open. And the Bible says something. In vain is the snare laid in the sight of any bird. It's difficult now with the prison awakening of Christianity in this country for the man of another religion to perform his enterprise. You can't lay a trap in the sight of a bed and catch it. Everybody is awake. Prayer volume has increased in Nigeria. People have now decided to pray. People have made up their mind. We will pray because our victory in this country is in our prayer. Our, our living is in our prayer. And that means the number of people to enter heaven has increased. Amen. Give a clap offering to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 11 verse 33 to 36 Romans chapter 11 verse 33 to 36 Oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who had known the mind of the Lord or who had been his counselor or who had first given to him and it shall be recompensed to him again let's read verse 36 together one two go for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory Forever. Amen. God, leave him alone. Things are happening for your favor. Amen. Things are happening for your favor. Amen. You will see it. Amen. Somebody sent me a word. My phone. My phone. 
Somebody, some of the believers in holiness movement went, in, went to God in prayers. And the Lord spoke to them and they sent me this text. They sent me this text. This is what the Lord said concerning Nigeria. My finger is in this election. Therefore, I have not failed. For I can never fail. <laughs> My people, talk less. Don't blame. Watch. Pray. Thank and praise me. Nigeria holds the destiny of Africa. Nigeria holds the destiny of Africa. Stand still. You will see my salvation. I will take them. I will take them in their craftiness. I will exalt my name over the rulership of Nigeria. I sit as the ruler over Nigeria in Asu Rock. For the government is upon my shoulders. So you relax. I say you should relax. I say you should relax. Just watch. Keep on praying. And we shall see what our Lord shall do. As for holiness revival movement. For, your, for the little shame the people are giving you, you shall have double honor. The people shall see you and know that you are the chosen of the Lord. Honor is upon you. Glory is upon you. Majesty is upon you. Heaven is your own. Rise up upon your feet and let's go before the Lord. Begin to worship. That is our God. That is our God. Be free. Be relaxed. Keep on believing. Keep on praying. God is the ruler. He is the king of the universe. Great is his wisdom. Great is his power.
Jesus' name we pray.